What I want to do in this video is introduce uh, a small amount of mathematical notation, nothing for you to worry about, which is going to allow us to explore a few of the issues surrounding this idea of putting agents in their environments and the decision-making that they do. So, let's have a look at the components of this model that we're going to use. So the first thing that we do is we want to model environment states. So the idea is we're going to have a set, big E, here, which is going to be the set of all possible configurations of the environment. So if the environment was a computer program, then it's all possible configurations of the, the program's memory, for example. Uh, if it's a game of chess, then these are all possible uh, configurations of the game of chess, all possible situations within a, uh, uh, that could arise within a game of chess. We're not going to dig down, though, into exactly what these environment states are. We're just going to keep it at that level of abstraction and assume we've got this set of environment states, this big E here being this set of environment states. Well, we've already said agents are things that do things to their environment, and to model the things that they're doing, we're going to have this set AC of possible actions. So the, the members of this set AC we denote by alpha, alpha prime, alpha one, and so on. And again, we're not worrying about exactly what those actions are. In, for example, a Unix software environment, these actions could be removing files or moving a file from one place to another or processing a file in some way. If the environment was a physical environment, then they could be uh, actuator actions, the robot picking something up and moving it around, or maybe moving from one location to another, and so on. But we'll keep it abstract, we'll just assume there is this set AC of actions that our agent can perform. So E, all possible configurations of the environment, AC, the actions that our agent can do in this environment. So we earlier talked about the idea that an agent goes through this sense-decide-act loop, this continual loop of looking at its environment, deciding what to do, uh, then performing that action which changes the environment in some way, then the agent observes its environment and decides what to do and so on. So this leads naturally to the idea of a run. And a run, we use lowercase r to denote runs, runs are just interleaved sequences of environment state action, environment state action, environment state action. So the environment starts off in some state E0, so we're always going to use little e0 to denote the initial state of the environment. And to keep things simple, we assume there is just one initial state of the environment possible. In principle, there could be others, but we'll keep it simple. On the basis of that initial state, the agent looks at its environment and decides what to do. It chooses an action, in this case it chooses alpha zero, performs that action, and then we use this arrow to indicate that the state is transformed from one state to another. It transforms this, this action, alpha zero, transforms, changes environment state E zero into environment state E one. So then again, the agent goes through its sense decide act loop, it looks at its environment again, decides what to do, chooses alpha one, which changes the environment state again to E2, and so on. Okay? So when you put an agent together with an environment and the agent continually going around that sense decide act loop, you lead, this leads to the idea of a run. Okay, uh, and we use this calligraphic R to denote the set of all possible runs over some set of environment states and actions. We're going to not mention those, just assume that they're given. Uh, then we use another little bit of notation here to indicate whether the runs that end with an action, R superscript AC, and the runs that end with an environment state, R superscript E. So R superscript AC is just a run where the last thing that happened was the agent chose to do an action. R superscript E is a run where the last thing that happened was the agent, where the environment changed state. Okay, so the key thing we want to do then when we describe an environment, the main thing that we want to do is describe the effects that actions have on an environment. And we do this with what's called a state transformer function. So tau here, tau for transformer, uh, is a state transformer function. So all a state transformer function does is takes as input a run, a history, where the last thing that happened was the agent chose to perform an action, and it gives us outputs the environment states that could result from the performance of that action given the history of the system as described in the run in the input. 
So it takes a run where the last thing that happened was the agent chose to perform an action and gives as output the set of states that could result. So this notation here, this P of E, is just the power set of the set of environment states. It gives us output a set of states, those which could result. So there are two assumptions implicit within this definition. The first is that state transformer functions are history dependent. That is, in order to decide what the next states of the environment could be, a state transformer function looks at the whole history of the system so far. And the second assumption is that environments are non-deterministic. There are multiple possible states that could result from our agent performing to choose one, the same action, given the same run so far. So there are multiple possible states that could result. So the output of a state transformer function is a set of states. OK, um, what happens if this state transformer function gives us output the empty set well, in this case, we, say it's, we think of it as being game over. It's like the run is terminated, the system is terminated, that's it. The, 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 the whole thing is over. So to completely describe an environment then, we've got a set of environment states, E. So these are all configurations of the game of chess. Uh, an initial environment state, E0, that's how the game of chess starts off. And then the state transformer function, tau, just says how the game of chess changes, how the configuration of the chessboard changes as a result of people performing moves. So that's those three components, the set of environment states, the initial state, the state transformer function. That's all we need to describe uh, an environment. What about agents? Well, we model agents in a similar but slightly more restricted way. We model an agent as a function which takes as input uh, a run where the last thing that happened was the environment changed state. So the agent function takes as input a run where the last thing that happened was the environment changed state. And it gives as output an action, the action that the agent would choose to perform, given it had seen that run where the last thing that happened was the environment changed state. So the input is just a run where the last thing that happened was the environment changed state. The output is a single action, and that's the key difference we assume between agents and environments. We're assuming that agents here have to be deterministic. Given the same sequence of events, they will choose the same action. Uh, so that's how we model an agent. So this isn't telling you how agents go about making that decision. It's just saying in each possible situation that could arise, each possible history of the system that could arise, this is what our agent would choose to do. So we just model it uh, at that very, very abstract level. So that's the basic model of agents and environments. We, when we talk about a system, then we're talking about an agent together with an environment. Okay? We talk about a system as being an agent together with an environment. And when you put an agent in an environment, it will generate a set of runs. These are all the possible runs that could occur if this agent is placed in this environment. There's more than one possible run that could occur because our environments are assumed to be non-deterministic. For the same action that an agent chooses to perform, there are multiple possible outcomes, and hence multiple possible runs. So we use this notation R of AG and N to denote the set of possible runs of our agent uh, in, our, in the environment.